It might be surprising at first glance to some, but there are quite a lot of people who have reached financial independence, and maybe even retired, that have discovered that it isn't all it's cracked up to be. If you don't believe me, just Google why financial independence isn't all it's cracked up to be, and you'll find several articles and blogs discussing the potential pitfalls of an unsuccessful post-FI lifestyle. But why is this? Why is it that when we've put away enough money to quit our jobs, if that's what we want to do, and start living life on our own terms, we sometimes find out that it doesn't live up to our own expectations? Well, I have two potential theories. The first is that this unfortunate discovery can come about because of unrealistic expectations surrounding what financial independence will actually bring you. It won't magically solve all of life's problems. You'll still be bored, you'll still be stressed and frustrated from time to time, and you'll still have things about yourself that you'll want to improve on. Thankfully, with sustained focus and effort towards self-improvement and self-discovery, you can make those improvements and make the best out of whatever life throws at you, just like you did with your finances in order to reach FI in the first place, but you get the point. Money alone will not solve these kinds of issues, no matter how much of it you accumulate. The second is that the realization can come because we spend so much time and effort planning out our path to FI that we fail to do the same for our life after FI. Think about it. When you're still on the path to achieving financial independence, your day is full, and at least compared to an unplanned post-FI lifestyle, highly varied. You're working a full-time job, if not more, and may or may not have other irons in the fire through side hustles or businesses. You're constantly researching new budgeting or investing strategies and other financial tips and tricks to help make yourself more financially efficient and effective in order to raise the chances of one day reaching your ultimate goal. And you're engaging in a variety of fun activities, both to have fun and as a way to decompress or de-stress from the often very long work weeks. And that's all before factoring in things like activities for the kids, if you have them. So in short, you've got a lot on your plate to keep you busy. But when you've reached FI, it's entirely possible that the picture of your day-to-day -day lifestyle changes dramatically. If you do choose to leave your job, and your kids flee the nest if they haven't already, suddenly you have too much time on your hands for the first time since, well, probably your last summer vacation as a kid, with no ready way to enjoyably fill it. And that's not a situation we want to find ourselves in. We don't want to be scrimping and saving and sacrificing all those years to find that the reward was not worth all the effort. Because that can be incredibly demoralizing, if not outright depressing. So, with that being said, it's important that we put in at least as much thought and effort toward building a vision for what our post-FI life will look like as we do in planning out how our journey to FI will go. And ideally, we'd start working on it before reaching financial independence, since we're not likely to find the perfect solution right away, and we don't want to waste any more of our free time trying to figure it out than we have to. Today, I'm going to be talking about a few tips that'll help us do just that. But before we get going, be sure to like this video if you haven't already, as it really does help out the channel a lot, and subscribe with notifications on for more money-related videos like this one every single week. And if you want to further support this channel, you can check out some of the links I've left in the description below, which includes a link to my Patreon page. This is the best way to show your support for this channel, and in addition to that, you can also get early access to new videos and exclusive content such as spreadsheets based off the ideas we discuss in these videos. The spreadsheets will allow you to play with your own numbers and see how big of a difference some of the ideas we discuss can make for your own personal financial situation. If you've taken the time to read and listen to people who have reached financial independence and made the transition into that post-FI life successfully, and those who haven't, you'll notice something. Those who do successfully make the transition maintain a routine and have a sense of purpose in their lives. They have some sort of mission or goal that they're striving towards, which helps them keep engaged in their lives and fill up the time in their day in an enjoyable manner. Those who lack this sense of purpose, this mission or goal, tend to find themselves more or less meandering through life, which is rarely good for our physical or mental health. Eventually, they become disillusioned with their post-FI lifestyle, and usually go back to what they were doing before reaching FI, which, if they enjoyed it, is absolutely fine, but if they didn't, well then that's not a good place to end up. Now, that's not to say that this mission has to be grand or elaborate. It just has to be meaningful to the individual pursuing it. Something to keep them happily engaged in life and, ideally, in the world around them. Something as simple as writing a book or touring your country's national parks could serve as a goal for someone who is particularly imaginative or enjoys travel. Sure, eventually they'd finish writing their book or they'd see all the sites that they're interested in and have to find a new mission to chase, but that's the case with most missions. Precious few are genuinely lifelong tasks. But the key is, you need something to drive you. 
some reason to get out of bed in the morning, or it becomes much easier to just drift through life, which is perfectly fine on occasion and in small doses, but when done consistently over an extended period of time, it leads to some undesirable side effects. So, with that being said, how do you find this purpose, this goal to strive toward? Well, there are a couple of techniques that might help. One technique is to crowdsource ideas from others. Basically, the idea is to research other people's blogs, websites, comments, what have you, until you find an idea or maybe a handful of ideas that you can then mix and match in a way that really speaks to you. Some popular ideas that I see come up in other people's works on the subject a lot are traveling, as there are a near limitless number of things to see, do, and experience in the world. Pick a region, pick a theme, like national parks or world wonders, and start exploring. You could continue working, but maybe less so than you were before, or just on your own terms, possibly with some sort of side hustle or business, or just remotely or in between sabbaticals. You could go back to school, not necessarily to get a new degree or to switch fields, although you certainly could do that, but rather just to learn for the sake of learning more about something that you're interested in. Technically, this could also be done without the expense of higher education through learning via online resources like Khan Academy or the University of YouTube. You could join a gym or just go on a health kick in general. Many of us don't have the time and energy to really focus on our physical, let alone mental health when we're working full-time jobs or more, but once you've reached financial independence, it's much easier to find ways to make the time for those things because you no longer need to keep your nose to the grindstone for quite as long. You can make more time to spend with friends and family. Similar to the gym example, many of us don't get as much quality time with those people as we'd like during our working lives. Making the commitment to give this part of our lives more of our focus can be a great piece to the post-FI lifestyle puzzle. You could find a new hobby. This could entail just about anything you can think of, and you could certainly rotate in between a bunch of them over time if you want to, just so you don't get bored with one and find yourself with nothing to do. But off the top of my head, you could hike, bike, run, hunt, cook, ski, snowmobile, raft the Grand Canyon or Mississippi River, build things, renovate houses, referee local sporting events, learn a new language or skill, which could entail quite a list of things in and of itself, search for megalodon teeth on a coast somewhere, build a computer, write a book or a song, and so on and so forth. Don't be afraid to get creative and try something. The worst thing that can happen is you find it isn't really something for you, and then you just try something else. You could volunteer. It's not only a great way to keep yourself busy, but it also helps you to give back by serving a community, organization, or cause that you're passionate about. Or you could chase a dream. For instance, the mad scientist applied to be an astronaut. Sure, the statistical probability that he, or any one individual, would be accepted is pretty low, but what has he got to lose by giving it a shot? Another technique for finding a goal to strive for is to look to the past. Think back to things that interested you as a kid, but that you've largely stopped doing as an adult. Try some of them out, and see if they're still as enjoyable to you nowadays. If they are, find a way to work them into your developing post-FI routine. If not, hey, that's okay, you can always try something else. And finally, a third technique is just to experiment. If you haven't found something in any of the websites, forums, blogs, what have you, if the comments of your friends and family have not given you any insights or inspiration, and if your past was utterly unhelpful in finding something to do that you'd actually enjoy, then we can always turn to just trying stuff. Just pick something and see if anything comes of it. Ideally, this would be a thing that you wouldn't ordinarily consider doing, because at this point we've essentially established that you don't really know what you're passionate about. If you did, you would have likely found something by looking at your past or just in the process of thinking about and researching ideas from others. One way or another, something would have probably clicked at this point. But if nothing did, then the goal should be to go out on a journey of self-discovery until you happen to find something that does capture your interest. The best way to do that is to try something you haven't tried before. So, there you go. Those are a few techniques for finding something to do with your life after reaching financial independence. They certainly aren't the only techniques you can use, but they should give you a good base to start from as you think about your future. The main thing to remember is that if you're pursuing financial independence, and especially if retirement is part of that plan, in some form or fashion, it's important to retire to something, and not just retire from something. I hope that this video can serve as a jumping off point for you in finding that something. But that'll do it for me today. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button if you haven't already, subscribe, and hit that bell next to my name so you'll be notified of all my future uploads. I generally upload every single Monday, and if you have a friend that would be interested in this kind of content, be sure to share it with them. Let's really get this information out there and start our own financial revolution.